Now let me show you how to create and define a style rule onto the project. So first, let me show you my preferred way to start a project. I will select the project file, double click on that, which will automatically start Visual Studio 2012, and that project will be loaded into the tool. Now I could take a look what is the structure of that project. And then if I will start with a new project, I could go to the file and I go to the new start a project. I could always start with a blank application. In this case, we already created some project based on the blank application. So I'm not going to create it again. Now you can see after you create a blank template project, the reference which contains the Java script for Windows library with CSS and the JavaScript already generated here. And also, you will have the default CSS, in this case is empty, which we will be working on that later on, is also generated. The images, which contains all the logo, splash screen, and the background, are also generated with some of the default images. And here, you will be able to add in your preferred logos, background, and the splash image. Also, there will be a default JavaScript file generated as well. Photos are something that we added into this project, which contains all the, the images from the zoo that we will be able to use in the project. Default.html, this is actually the HTML start page. And we're also going to work a lot on this page. Okay. So now we get some uh, pretty good understanding about this project structure, and we could actually move on to the next step, which is using Blend to design HTML and CSS. One of the difference between Visual Studio and the Blend is Blend is served as an authoring tool, uh, more like for the purpose of visually designing your project, whereas Visual Studio you could actually see all type of uh, files in the editor, for example, JavaScript. And you could also do debugging onto the JavaScript. This is a feature which does not have in brand. OK, so now we're going to actually work on the start page as well as some of the CSS uh, uh, properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, right click on default.html and then select option open in brand. And this will automatically open the whole project into brand. And then what's cool about that is Visual Studio and the brand from now on will be synced on the changes you did in either IDE. So for example, if we did a lot of work inside a brand, all the files will be saved. And then once it's saved in the brand, the version inside of Visual Studio will also be saved. So this provides a very easy way for us to do design and development. OK, so now uh, we could take a look at uh, the whole uh, structure of this brand. So what we see here is we see the project is um, loaded here, which is very similar as the project you see in Visual Studio. And then uh, you will see things like style rules which will actually having all the HTML uh, page loaded there with all the default CSS. The live DOM is actually the one we're going to work a lot. It provides you with all the uh, live DOM elements. And then the other thing uh, I want uh, to get your attention is the CSS properties. This is where once you select an element, all the CSS property will show up there. There's also HTML attributes, which we'll be using later on. Now first, let's actually go to the particular element of our interest. In this case, it's called game body. This particular area is what we call artboard. This is where visually you could see uh, what your project or what your page will look like. Underneath that, you will see uh, two different files. One is the default HTML, which is in HTML syntax. And the other is the default.css, 
which for now is empty. Now we're going to actually create uh, a particular uh, style for element. So there are multiple ways of doing that. You could either go to the CSS properties and then you could uh, invoke this particular button which will allow you to either create a style rules from element ID or create a style rules from element class. Or you could just go to the live DOM and then right click on this game body and then select an option called create style rule from element ID. So once you click on that, what you see here is in the default.css, we actually see there is a game body element which is defining in default.css. Now, next step is for us to apply some CSS properties onto this game body. So what we will do here is we will go to the CSS property and we see in the art board, we see that a particular game body, uh, the board is actually very large, which is kind of out of scope of the whole art board area. So we want to fix this. So what we do is we will actually go to the game body and then we will actually finding um, a property called sizing. Expand the sizing and what we want to do here is we want to redefining the width and the height. So we want to make it the width is 100% and also make the height 100%. Click enter. And then what you see here is you see the game body is defined with width 100%, height 100% in default.css. So now we have fixed the size of this game body. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to actually fix the background. So we're going to actually go back to the CSS property and choose the background, expand the background, and we're going to choose this particular symbol. This is the one we could use to select, say, we want to choose an image. So click on that. What you will see is we will see a drop down menu which contains all the images in this particular project. What's cool about that is you don't have to go to each individual folder to pick your image. You could just use this drop down menu to see all the images available and choose the background image you want. Now we see the background image is chosen. Next, we want to do is we want to make sure the background image has a right size. So what we will do is we will actually expanding the size and choose the keyword cover, which will actually cover the whole area which we define for this game body. Now, after we do that, you can see in the CSS file, what we see is we actually have the background image defined and we have the background size defining. So now this concludes a demo to create and apply a style onto the game body in this memory project. So, one thing don't forget to do is you should always go to the file, make sure you save all the things you've edited.